Lately, I've been checking out the Jeune Molus G300 Bicolor Video Light. It's the latest, greatest, and brightest from the Molus G series to date. It's compact, it has simply eye-popping power, and is reasonably priced. But is that a recipe for being good? What are the features? Does the build quality stack up to the competition? And is it good value? All of this to come. I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no problem. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers, so it would really make my day if you could just take a second to hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot to me, helps the channel, and um, I just appreciate it. Uh, thank you in advance. This is not sponsored content, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel, I buy gear and then I give the gear to my backers. So if that's of interest, do check it out. It's all linked below. Onwards. Starting with the features and having reviewed the Molus G200, this is very familiar as the G300 is basically the G200 but with just about everything beefed up. Starting with the power side of things and as the G300 name suggests, it's 300 watts and the peak output in terms of brightness is 15,500 lux at 6,500 Kelvin. That's just with the bare bulb. You can find lots of lux measurements on Jayun's website, but for my videos, I like to stick with bare bulb at one meter measurement, and that way it's consistent across all my reviews, uh, just because when you use different types of reflectors, they can affect that brightness measurement, um, and I, you know, that's not consistent. So that's why I do it that way. Just like the G200, the G300 also has an overclocked max extreme mode, they call it, which boosts the power from 300 watts to 500 watts, and that increases the output to a pretty whopping 20,300 lux at 4,300 Kelvin. Now that's really pretty bright. It's actually edging into kind of equaling my key light of choice, which is the Aperture 600D, which kicks out just a little over 22,000 lux. So pretty close. However, it's all very well showing you these max output figures. But what I find is so often they're not at the color temperature that I like to shoot at, and I know a lot of you guys like to shoot at as well, and that's 5500 Kelvin. At 5500 Kelvin, this unit kicks out 15,500 lux, which is pretty good. And when you engage max extreme mode, it jumps up to 18,100 lux, which pretty good especially when you consider the price. It's important to note that Jeun warned that when using max extreme mode, there are limits to it. And that's kind of your ambient temperature. If the unit gets too hot, it will stop using max extreme mode and drop back down to normal mode until it reaches a suitable temperature. Bear that in mind. Speaking of color temperature, this unit goes from 2700 to 6500 Kelvin, a very common, very useful range. What I would love to see, maybe, from Jeun is a daylight only version of the G300. One that could focus more on, you know, extra brightness, on uh, probably, it would probably be better value, I would imagine. And they could even maybe focus more on the color accuracy side of things. It could be called the, Molus G300D. What do you think? The G300, of course, has a Bowens mount, which I love and is the industry standard. It'd be silly to have anything else, to be honest. It just opens up so many amazing options for diffusers and light modifiers. Now, I've been using apertures, light domes for quite a while now, but for this video, I'm actually using Jeun's own 90 centimeter light dome, and I'd say it's just as good as Aperture's light dome too, except it's slightly cheaper and slightly lighter. All good things. The G300 comes with two units, the light unit and the controller unit, plus it has seven and a half meters total of cabling, which is nice because it means that you can, you can hoist it high up on a stand, you can control it from a distance. It's all good. It's mains power only, and I would say it would have been nice to see some kind of alternative power options like the ability to use batteries, although they'd need to be pretty beefy, or to have DTAP outputs for powering other gear. The G300 has what Jeun called DynoVort Mark II cooling, which is their proprietary method of dissipating the heat generated by the two units. And it really needs it, as these get really hot, especially in max extreme mode. 
cooling has improved quite a bit on these kind of lights and in normal mode it just you know has a soft waft I would say a kind of low frequency not that high pitched whine which can make its way onto your microphones and that sounds like this and then when you switch onto max extreme mode it starts to sound like this and then after a little while in sort of reasonably warm conditions it sounds like this so honestly, I would say if noise is a concern to you, I would just leave it in normal mode because it is quite a bit quieter. But I'm sure you will figure that out all by yourself. We have to talk about color accuracy and CRI and TLC measurements. Going forward in my reviews, I will be ignoring published CRI and TLCI measurements. They are extremely dated by now and light manufacturers can actually tweak their products so that they score highly and they're arguably not really very compatible with modern cameras to the point where I would advise you also consider them irrelevant. Lighting manufacturers, people are wising up. Instead, I'd love to see more manufacturers work on getting a really high SSI rating, which is Spectral Similarity Index and this is a way of comparing their light source to a very well-known and perfect light source like the sun. To be clear, it's actually really challenging for manufacturers to obtain really high SSI ratings. And actually, you won't see them published on many listings because, you know, like I said, it's, it's challenging and often they don't score well. Instead, we have my secondary preference, which is actually TM30. And this checks the light source against 99 colors, whereas, you know, when you compare it to CRI, that compares it to eight. Go figure. There are two main types of TM30 reading. There's RF, which is the similarity to that 99 color index that I mentioned, and RG, which compares the saturation versus that index. And the G300 actually does pretty damn well with RF 94 on average and RG 101 on average. Like I said, these are not perfect, but they are definitely more reliable than CRI and TLCI. Just to let you know, there are some flashing lights coming up in the next section, so photosensitive people beware. The G300 has 14 lighting effects, like fireworks, welding, explosion, TV, faulty bulb, flame, and of course, music mode, which will react to audio sources. Moving on to build quality, and I probably shouldn't compare the G300 to the G200, but you know, I'm gonna. And the G300 is noticeably more solid, chunky and premium feeling with larger housings to accommodate the cooling system, large rubber feet on the controller plus other rubber accents. The light unit gains a grip. The mounting system is now solid with a light stand grip, again with a rubber accent. I'd say you're getting higher quality materials throughout, including the cable connector, which is metal, whereas the G200s was plastic. Next onto the user interface and user experience side of things. And I have to say, I'm not mad about the user interface of the controller unit. Other than the on off button, there are just two buttons, one for brightness and one for color temperature, which is great for the basic operation of the unit, but there is extra functionality, which to access them requires a combination of clicking and holding down and that kind of thing. And I am willing to bet that most users might not remember the combination. I would have liked just one or two small additional buttons just to make things more simple. Let's say one to activate max extreme mode and another one to cycle through the effects. Luckily, the user experience side of things is saved by the ZY Vega app, which you know lets you control all of the units and all of the functionality like like so, I can turn everything off, I can group them, I can turn them off one by one, like that, and I can change color temperature, I can trigger effects, everything. This is the way these kind of products are going. Simple interface on the actual control unit, and then everything else bunged into an app. Aperture, for example, have their Sidus Link, which does basically the same job as the ZY Vega app. But is this better, having simple controls on the unit and then everything in the app? I don't know. I think personally, I pr prefer to have, you know, easy access to everything on the on the controller unit because often my phone, I, I need it for other things. But I'm curious as to what you think. 
What's your preference? Now, I've been using the G300 as my key light for the whole video, and this is what it's like with, you know, my hair light off, my fur light off, and I've just got the background lights on because that's, you know, they're not doing much. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's great. I think it's on maybe 30% power on normal mode. So this has got more than enough for general use, and uh, I'm, yeah, I'm impressed. This can certainly be a primary key light. Moving on now to value for money and alternatives, and it always helps to gain perspective from looking at the competition, don't you think? So let's do that now. First up, we have the obvious, possibly market-leading Aperture LS300X, which is the bi-color version of the 300D. It's around a grand, the color accuracy readings are just a shade better than the G300, but is nowhere near in terms of brightness, peaking at just 7,500 lux at 4,300 Kelvin, which is 63% less output compared to the G300. So I would say this light is arguably not good value in today's market, and I wouldn't be shocked if we see a Mark II with improved spec in short order. Then we have the small rig RC350B, which is around $850 pounds euros, and kicks out 14,700 lux peak at 6,500 Kelvin. Beware, their website contains none of the more relevant accuracy readings like TM30, CQS, or SSI, so there's that. Again, I'd say arguably this is not top, top value, seeing as the G300 is around 30% less at the time of filming. So with this in mind, I'm fairly confident to declare the G300 a bargain, especially when you consider it offers more than the aforementioned duo for less. The only other light that I admitted from this list is the Amaran 200XS, and that's only because I'm really not sure about this. The price seems suspiciously low. Everywhere you look with this light, it seems like there's detail missing with the specs, and it seems, by all accounts, that the power side of things is not really up to much. However, the idea with this is it's meant to have a really high SSI rating, so this may be a product that I just need to check out myself and review. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Anyway, now moving on to pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. This is bright, really, really bright, especially when you consider the price. It's also shockingly compact. The size versus power ratio is off the charts. I would say this is outstanding value in its own right, but especially versus the competition. It's really whisper quiet in normal mode. I tested this in the summer where, you know, it's reasonably warm and it's just whisper quiet, as I said. It's got a balance mount, I love that. It just opens up so many possibilities for different modifiers, love it. I also like the ZY Vega app, it's simple. All of my Zhiyun lights pair really easily to it. And onto the cons, and yes, it's overclockable with that max extreme mode, but the use of it is limited by the ambient temperature. If you're using max extreme mode, it can be noisy, depending on, again, the ambient temperature. The user interface of the controller unit, whilst not terrible, would be so much better, I feel, and more friendly with one or two more buttons. It's mains power only and with no battery options. Doesn't really bother me because I'm a mains power kind of guy, but you know, a lot of people do prefer that flexibility. Finally, to my opinion, and I really liked the smaller G200 and the G300 is better in every single way except for the price, but you know, when you consider it in comparison to what you actually get, that price is very reasonable. So clearly I am a fan. I really like the G300. I think it can be a really good option as someone's primary key light. You know, it's got plenty of power so you can use lots of diffusion and get a really flattering look. It's good. In my section about alternatives, there was a light that I didn't talk about really and that was the Aperture 300D. And that's mainly because it's not comparable. It's not a bi-color light, but the 300D is just such a workhorse for so many people, and you know what? I think the G300 is the smarter choice between the two. The G300 is two-thirds of the price of the 300D. It's 40% brighter than the 300D. The only advantages I can see you get with Aperture's 300D is uh, the Cider Slink side of things. If you're tied into that ecosystem, then fine. The build quality, I would say, is higher on the Aperture, fair enough, and 
you know, the only other thing I can think of is the other power options. But other than that, the G300 is the smarter choice. And bear in mind, this is coming from someone who bought an Aperture 300D. And I really think that just highlights the crazy value that you get with the G300. And you know, I mean, long time viewers of the channel know how much I appreciate great value for money products. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you find this video interesting and helpful. I wanna hear from you. Do you agree? What did I miss? Definitely let me know your thoughts and, and comments down in the comments section and I'm, I'm down there as much as I can. I'll see you there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next, so do what you're told. And below is my most recent upload, and until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.